I thought I'd show you my new wildlife photography blind. It's fairly lightweight and it comes with an integrated chair and it collapses into a pretty small backpack. So along with my video gear, I can hike it in and set it up in forests and in fields. You know, hunting wildlife, whether for game or for photography, is never guaranteed and this should make the hours of waiting for wildlife to come along a lot more comfortable and it'll conceal my movements when and if they do. And of course, shooting smooth video requires a solid support and fluid movements. And that's where a good video tripod and head come in. I'm fortunate to live within the Pacific Flyway, and rice is grown in my area. Many thousands of migratory waterfowl use these flooded fields to feed and rest along their long journey from Alaska to southern points of Mexico. It's mid-January and the area is full of snow geese. Canada geese and speckle belly white fronts are stopping over too, but it's the snows that dominate. In the last few decades, there's been a population explosion of snow geese. Only numbering a few thousand in the early 1900s, the snow goose population grew to 5 million by 1960 and is estimated at 15 million today. These geese are voracious feeders, and their grubbing is causing environmental damage to the habitat they and other species require. Hunting regulations have been relaxed in an attempt to reduce their numbers. Huge flocks of geese take flight simultaneously, it's called a grind. It's one of nature's most spectacular phenomenon to witness. Grind. I couldn't find any information on why grinds take place, 
Perhaps it's unknown, but it was my observation on this day that the mob of geese started feeding at one end of the rice field and systematically gleaned the paddy until they reached the other end. When every last bit had been picked clean, somebody gave the signal and the whole flock erupted into flight and then settled in on another field.